If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. Sure, but who the f*** are you? This counts as a double sin, considering you already pointed out the actress changed in the previous video. You patting the sin count, bro? I think you're patting the sin count. Also, is this movie recognizing that Marty's trip back to 1955 would have changed a hell of a lot more lives than just a handful? Because Jennifer Parker turned into Elizabeth Shue. This counts as a triple sin, considering you already pointed out the actress changed in the previous sin. You patting the sin count, bro? I think you're patting the sin count. You're acting like you haven't seen me in a week. How about ever? This counts as a quadruple sin, considering you already pointed out the actress changed in the previous sin. I think you're patting the sin count. Hey, Doc, you better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Part 1's mistake becomes Part 2's mistake. I could get up to 88 in a Prius with that much road. Okay, but this is, again, something you've already sent the previous movie for. If you know they're doing a reshoot on this scene, they have to say exactly what the other movie said for continuity's sake. And even if you had a quarter mile, you couldn't do 50 in a Prius. Why is Jennifer so willing to immediately hop into the DeLorean without one question asked? Maybe because this is her boyfriend, someone she trusts implicitly, and Doc is her boyfriend's friend, someone he trusts implicitly. Not every woman is a goddamn question a minute nag. What the hell is going on here? Only Biff in the entire neighborhood sees this. Yeah, so what's your point? Hey, October 21st, 2015! Hey, that's the day of this video's launch! What a coincidence! Hang on, what? It's not a coincidence? Wow, why wasn't I told about this? So, CinemaSins planned to release this video on the date the movie takes place, and they decided to point that out, which is cute. But why are they treating them releasing a video on a specific date as a sin of a movie? Because f you, that's why. Just a sleep inducing alpha rhythm generator. She was asking too many questions. And Maybe you shouldn't have ridiculously crashed into Marty's driveway and allowed her in the car in the first place. Hell, you didn't seem to think it was a big deal when you told Marty bring her along. I'm just here to point out that Jeremy asked why wasn't Jennifer asking questions when all Doc and Marty wanted was for her to get in a car. But when presented with evidence that she does ask a ton of questions when that car starts flying and time travels into the future, He's completely ignored that to talk about something equally irrelevant. Also, and this is not an original point by any means, but why do they have to go to the future to change things, when Doc could simply tell Marty in 1985 how things are and to avoid making bad decisions? This counts as a double sin, considering you already asked this question in the previous video. Also, as I said in that previous video, the plan was to have Marty pose as his son, Marty Jr., which would mean that Marty simply having information about his son's troubles wouldn't be enough to change them. Wow, Marty somehow produced a child with Jennifer that contained none of her DNA. Oh no, a kid looks more like one parent than the other. Well, that never happens in real life, so I guess that must be a sin. Oh wait. Cub sweep series in five? Did they think the World Series would be nine games by the time 2015 rolled around? A gentleman's sweep is still a sweep. Hey, what, what about Jennifer? We're not just gonna leave her here. Actually you are, and it turns out exactly as such a bad idea should turn out. <laughs> Look at that. Only 15 cents in, and CinemaSins is already just watching the movie and reacting to the plot. Apparently Jaws 19 will be directed by Max Spielberg, Steven's son. This must mean the family is in serious dire straits to take such a whoremongering gig. I'm gonna go ahead and tack on 10 cents for sinning this scene, and with such weak sauce justification too. How did Pussy Biff from 1985 ever get around to procreating? The guy was in his late 40s, definitely with no kids, but for the purposes of the sequel, he manages to find one willing female to marry into his lucrative auto-detailing empire, and that kid also had a kid. Wait, you honestly think pussies don't get married and have kids? Oh, that's why you don't have kids. He's Griff. Yeah, something that Doc didn't tell you for some reason when he hatched this half-assed plan. Except he actually did. Okay, now what? In exactly two minutes, you go around the corner into the Cafe 80s. Go in and order a Pepsi. Here's a 50. Then wait for a guy named Griff. Griff's gonna ask you about tonight. Are you in or out? Tell him you are out. Whatever he says, whatever happens, say no, you're not interested. Okay. 
What's wrong, McFly? Chicken? <laughs> Thus begins an incredibly ridiculous trigger word that the next two movies will use to advance the plot several times. Surprise, surprise, Jeremy is sinning characterization yet again. Character traits are not flaws of a film. This is like saying Deckard is an idiot for being distrustful of replicants because he'd eventually have sex with the only one who would bear a child. Hey, let's do everything we did in the first Back to the Future, only 2015 style, with 1989 knowledge. Yeah. What's... what's the problem? Hey, McFly, you bojo! <gasps> the first Star Wars got water! Unless you've got power! Well, it's still hovering, right? Why does it still have power to hover but not move? You know, I don't necessarily have a problem with this sin. My beef is that this is a clear demonstration of a movie giving CinemaSins rules, yet that still isn't good enough for them. Besides, the movie clearly shows Marty pushing off the ground when using a hoverboard, meaning it still hovers over water, but he has no propulsion or momentum to keep going. Keep it. I got a pit bull now. How? That thing clearly flew into the building. You were not a first responder on the scene and could not possibly have gotten all the way back here faster than Marty did anyway. If you watch the scene very closely, you can see that when Griff flew into the courthouse, the pit bull actually landed on the steps outside of the courthouse. Freeze, Scott! Now we know why they just left Jennifer in an alley. So this movie had a completely unnecessary way to have more conflict. But isn't that what a movie is? A series of conflicts that are hopefully resolved by the end? I mean, if these events never happened, then you don't have a movie. Think about it in terms of the movie being actual reality. Would a movie about these events even exist if there was no conflict? Are you seriously campaigning for a movie where literally nothing happens because the characters within are perfect and have no flaws? Biff managed to be in the perfect random place to not only hear about the time machine, but get his hands on the sports almanac. Again, if he wasn't there, there would be no movie. I seriously gotta review your book, dude, because I'm sure it's one of two things. Either nothing at all happens and the book is f***ing terrible, or things that are convenient happen so the plot can move forward and you're a hypocrite in these videos. I've read it. It's 100% the latter. I will give him some credit, though. It's a million times better than that bullshit Ben Shapiro wrote. Movie thinks if he's upside down, we won't notice a discount Crispin Glover. And you know what? Teenage me did not. But Sin me did, so... You know, I would have removed a sin if you'd counted this as a wash, considering the first time you watched this movie, the illusion worked. But you just had to cinema sense this. We can't risk you running into your older self. But why take the dog? Is it just so the DeLorean will be completely empty when Biff steals it? Because I think it is. Yes, he tells him to go find Jennifer, but since when is that dog a bloodhound? I've already had to explain dog anatomy in the previous video, so I guess I can do it again. Sure, bloodhounds are probably the best dog for the job, but literally any dog can track humans by scent. Bloodhounds are just really... Really good at picking up scents that are faint and almost gone, which wouldn't be the case because Jennifer is totally here right now. Okay, I want channels 18, 24, 63, 109, 87, and weather channel. Why does he refer to all the other channels by their numbers, but asks specifically for the weather channel? No one cares, Jeremy. What would have been really funny is if you'd have pointed out that channel 63 is advertising inflatable tits at 5% off. Uh, dude, are you sure you're not blind? I'm pretty sure that says 50% off. It doesn't matter. It's tits at wholesale prices. A fire sale on milk bags. In the future, metal will not conduct heat, so you can touch it with your bare hands. Well, considering this machine is an instant hydrator, the pizza doesn't have enough time for the metal to conduct heat. Read my facts. No! They still use faxes? Okay, you made this video in 2015, but even in the apocalyptic future of 2021, we still use faxes. Biff comes back after giving younger Biff the sports almanac, but nothing in this future has changed at all. It should be the nightmarish Biff future right now. No, because as explained in this movie, when someone goes to the past and changes something, they do not change their original timeline, but instead create a brand new timeline. However, they can still be affected by those changes, if it affects their existence, which is why Marty was fading in the previous movie. In a deleted scene, right after Biff comes back with the DeLorean, he fades away and dies, which is consistent with the logic presented in the first film. As we can see in this scene that was also cut from the film, Biff is literally erased from existence in the year 2015. This is why in the theatrical cut, Biff appears to be laboring and in pain when he returns from 1955. I remember bars being on these windows. Really? How often do you go to your own girlfriend's house then? 
bars on windows is something that should be black and white, not fuzzy and vague. How much do you want to bet there is someone watching this video that hasn't realized they have bars on their own windows until right now? Because I'm willing to wager there are at least three. Despite a massive worldwide change due to Biff's gambling success way back in 1958, Michael Jackson still somehow made Thriller and Off the Wall exactly as he did in the normal timeline. That's because even in an alternate timeline, Michael Jackson is still hot shit. Beyonce could never. Dedicated to Hill Valley's number one citizen. It's at this point that Marty should already be zooming on over to Doc Brown's place to stop him from tearing the time machine apart. Right, because after being in a gunfight and stumbling over to Biff's hotel, I'm sure he has the clearest of minds right now. Learn the amazing history of the Tannen family, starting with his great-grandfather, Buford Mad Dog Tannen. See, this is the kind of awesome foreshadowing and cohesion you can get when you film sequels simultaneously. I appreciate the sin removal, but what I don't appreciate is when you make the removal sound but still add a sin anyway. Who edited these videos back in 2015? The dude that codes for CD Projekt Red? Third time's a charm. Lorraine, who was never into Biff, marries him anyway because of something vague about financial troubles or some Oh, and to give an emotional reason for Marty to change this future. Jeremy thinks women don't marry because of money. Apparently, he hasn't seen the men in black worm that was harassing LeBron. When I learned about your father, I figured you'd come here! So you found out Marty's dad died at the exact same time Marty found out? That's amazing timing. Considering both of these guys just came back from the future, there's nothing amazing about this. Besides, where does the movie say they found out at the exact same time? Marty was here way before Doc was, so it's obvious they found out at different times, but ended up at the same place. Remember, Doc traveled here by car, and Marty got here on foot. And gave the book to himself at some point in the past. Yeah, but why was he allowed to return to the original timeline while these two got sucked into the old version? That's not how this works. If you watch this scene a little longer, Doc explains it for you. It demonstrates precisely how time travel can be misused and why the time machine must be destroyed. Right, so we go back to the future and we stop it from stealing the time machine. We can't, because if we travel into the future from this point in time, it will be the future of this reality. As I explained about old Biff dying in the deleted scene, the alternate timelines change gradually. This is why Marty and deleted scene Biff began fading away. There needs to be some catalyst that marks the change, and when that happens, everything changes. Crazy old codger with a cane shows up. He says he's my distant relative. I don't see any resemblance. Biff has literally zero reason to tell Marty any of this. Other than the fact that he plans to kill him, thereby keeping this knowledge a secret anyway? I couldn't match up the bullet that killed your old man! You were firing at him earlier. Now you're monologuing. Look, I know this is a movie trope, but taunting someone is entirely within Biff's character. And he has Marty dead to rights. Good for you, Marty. Biff can still shoot you, right? Yeah. But would you think about shooting someone when you're being presented with a flying DeLorean? You really have a problem with people being shocked by fantastic things and not exactly thinking clearly. A walkie-talkie so we can keep in contact. When the f*** did you buy those? During the time Marty was being chased by Biff around the hotel and Lorraine was poking out her tits? The manure. I remember that. Why wouldn't you remember that? Because it was 60 f***ing years ago? Biff literally tries to lift up Lorraine's skirt on the downtown square in broad daylight. And no one cares but Lorraine. Well, I mean, it is 1955. I mean, Jesus. Have you ever seen a movie this f***ing clever? Again, I appreciate the sin removal, but you put the sin counter up instead of down a second time. Guess how many sins we're going to give you for that? That's right. Guys, what's that? This is literally the only move Marty McFly has in his arsenal, and it still works. And you're wondering why it's the only move he has in his arsenal? And doesn't this movie have a scene where this doesn't work? Hmm, let me see. Oh, here it is. All right, punk! Hey, look! Good thing this is one of those chases where only the principal characters are driving down the road at this very moment. Again, this is 1955. It's not like there are a ton of people that own passenger vehicles in the first place. That'll teach him. Biff seems to be glad about committing murder, and he doesn't the least bit care that he just did more than 300 bucks damage to his car right there. Yes, Jeremy, the character that we have been shown is murderous, doesn't care about committing murder. It's also funny that he assumes he cares about $300 worth of damage to his car at this point, when Biff literally has a book that he knows will make him a millionaire. Yeah, yeah, no more Pleasure Palace, but the exact same matchbook? Wouldn't it be cooler if the whole matchbook just disappeared? Same question Future Birdman asked me about CinemaSins when he came back from the future. Same here. Why would he have been honored on that same day? 
Wouldn't it be cooler if it just told us someone else got murdered? Same question I asked PB about the election when I unfortunately stumbled into this dystopian timeline. Where I'm from, Hillary won. Don't get me wrong, it's shit too. But we never had idiots try to take over the goddamn Capitol building. Clint Eastwood never won anything like this. Clint who? That's right. You haven't heard of him yet. The movie is a dick to Revenge of the Creature. If the critic reviews of the time were any indication, well, I'll just let Joe Button describe it for you. Hear me and hear me good, I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two-pack of ass. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks.